from the power of the fan to privacy settings. Please join me in welcoming Lance Ulanoff, Mashable's chief correspondent and editor at large, joined in conversation with Moxie Marlinspike, computer security researcher. See. How's everybody doing? Well, I'm sorry, what? Oh, this is not bad. Moxie, uh, so it's, it's a real pleasure to meet you. Um, I'm wondering if uh, you and everybody else out here knows uh, that you um, probably do have something to hide, but you just don't know it yet. Those are your words, Moxie. Uh, yeah. Something that you wrote a few years back is uh, you became extremely concerned about privacy and uh, the sort of illusion of privacy. I actually wanted to come out here singing that song uh, by Rockwell, I always feel like somebody's watching me. But then I heard that young woman sing earlier and realized that was a terrible idea. So what, why do you think, I mean, I get the sense you think privacy is an illusion. So maybe you could talk a little bit about that. And I know also you might want to mention uh, your, your company and the, the work at um, Open Whisper Systems as a direct connection to that. Yeah, I mean, I don't think that privacy is an illusion. I think it's actually obtainable. And it's something that we're kind of at a unique moment in history to obtain. Um, uh, so, you know, I work on a project called Open Whisper Systems, which is a, a little nonprofit project that's trying to make um, private communication simple. Uh, trying to develop um, privacy enhancing technology that allows people to easily communicate privately. Um, I'm sorry, I should have said actually, I think privacy <laughs> is an illusion. I got confused. Oh, I, you know, see, I, I, was, I, was, I was basically yeah, yeah, yeah. projecting I on you. Uh, yeah, I, uh, um, I mean, I think it depends on you know, how you think about privacy, right? You know, I think a lot of people today say, oh, privacy is dead. Um, you know, people like sharing, there's like a sharing culture, um, which is great. Um, you know, I think people enjoy sharing conversations, moments, photos, videos with their friends. Uh, but when you do that, your intention is to share that with your friends. It's not to share it with, like, Facebook, the company, or, uh, you know, Twitter, the company. Uh, and so there's, like, a little bit of disconnect between, like, what you think you're doing and what's actually happening. So, so since you mentioned Facebook, uh, yesterday, Mark Zuckerberg got up um, on stage or somewhere around the UN and said that uh, he wants to help uh, lift people up out of poverty uh, with connectivity, with basically broadband. Uh, and of course, everybody said, well, then everybody's going to be on Facebook as well. I mean, is he, does that seem like, well, I guess, first of all, if you're doing that for people, you know, what's the approach for privacy with these kinds of developing nations, with people who have never had access or just starting to have access to some of these tools? I mean, how do you even explain it to them? Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, I think uh, hopefully you don't have to. Uh, you know, the, the, the idea is that, um, I mean, it seems like everyone here thinks that communication is important and valuable um, because it allows people um, to, you know, organize and collaborate. And I think that that is most true when people feel like they can speak freely. Uh, and it's hard to speak freely when you know that you're always being surveilled. Well, is that sort of, uh, are they at cross purposes then? I mean, it seems like, you know, we, we got access to social media and basically jumped in feet first, all of us, without really any thought about this. But now we have hindsight. We bring social media to, to people who don't have access yet. I mean, it, is, it seems like we should try and prepare them. I mean, it's not as simple as saying, well, you've got communication, things are better. Yeah, well, I, I guess, um yeah, so, I, you know, we've, like, learned a lot in terms of um, how information works. And, um, you know, one of the things that we've learned sort of in the security industry over the past um, 15 years is that uh, you cannot write secure software. Uh, that, that, you know, if you develop some service somewhere, it is going to be compromised at some point. And so um, effective security isn't about trying to somehow secure computers because it's, that's really a losing game. Uh, and it's more about trying to secure information. And the best way to do that is to not have the information to begin with. Uh, and <laughs> but so that's not going to happen. I mean, well, it is it? happening. Uh, okay. So, you know, for instance, uh, you know, uh, I work on this project that is developing what's known as an end-to-end communication, end-to-end encryption protocol. 
And the idea is that like, if you want to send a message to your friend, it is encrypted on your device, and it doesn't get decrypted until it gets to your friend's they device. They have like a secure key on the other side? Yeah, but it's all invisible. Right? You, don't, you don't see any of this happening. I would like to see keys floating through the air, but yeah. we could. Uh, It'd be amazing. Uh, and so, you know, uh, we developed that, and we have some apps that use that. Anyone can download those apps and, and use them to communicate securely. And then we've been taking this technology and giving it away and allowing um, existing companies with existing products to integrate it into their products. So, for example, we've been doing a, an integration with WhatsApp, uh, which is the most popular messaging app in the world. Um, and, um, you know, almost done with the integration, and when we're done, um, you know, all WhatsApp users will have end-to-end -end encryption, which means that, you know, WhatsApp, the employees of WhatsApp, any one that hacks WhatsApp, the U.S. government that goes to WhatsApp, any foreign governments that go to WhatsApp, uh, won't have access to people's communication. But you did say earlier that ultimately everything's hackable. So, well, so how, how do we have, I mean, this encryption that you're talking about, is it unhackable? Yeah, so um, encryption is not, so I said it's impossible to write secure software. And okay. so uh, the danger of writing, trying to write secure software is that when all of your information goes to one place, let's say that you don't have end-to-end -end encryption and you have a billion people uh, you know, messaging and all those messages are going through one place, then it's really easy to just go to that one place, um, either as the government that uh, has jurisdiction over that place and compel right. uh, that company to provide the information, or as maybe a foreign government or uh, an attacker to um, remotely compromise uh, the computers and then get access to the information. If what you're doing is you're distributing the information so that the only people that have access to it are the senders and the receivers, that means you have to like hack everybody's phone in the world. That's right, individual, because each yeah. key is going to be different, exactly. so there's right. no central storehouse. Yeah. Uh, if you were to give, for example, Facebook a, a grade, a letter grade on privacy, uh, what grade would you give it right now? <laughs> I'm not putting them yeah. on the spot or anything. Yeah. Well, I mean, it's difficult to say. I mean, uh, WhatsApp, for instance, is owned by Facebook. Um, so uh, it is actually laudable and impressive that a company of that size uh, has taken steps to, um, you know, deliberately uh, protect their users in that way. Uh, so, you know, in that sense, they're, they're doing pretty well. Uh, uh, that other, was not a grade. <laughs> yeah, right. I mean, uh, yeah, in other ways, they're not doing as well. <laughs> I, mean, I put that like as a C, maybe, something like that. Um, you know, you talk about, I mean, I was really interested in how, you know, I think that, um, you know, you were talking a lot in sort of privacy, like people's activities and what they do and the fact that um, people almost have to sort of break laws to learn about which laws they want to implement. Like, for example, uh, smoking marijuana, that it would never become legal if people hadn't had the, the ability to smoke it in private, uh, which kind of leads to your privacy discussion. I mean, you know, you do seem to feel, at least in some of the writings I was looking at, that people are always being watched. One way or the other, they're being watched, and they could at any time be breaking a law because there are thousands and thousands of laws. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, I, there's a few ways to look at it. Um, certainly, um, surveillance is at an all-time high, and privacy is at an all-time low. And that's why I'm interested in working on this project. Um, you know, and so I guess, you know, one thing that comes up in working on this project is like, well, what about law enforcement? You know, shouldn't, um, shouldn't we be concerned about uh, security or... Terrorism. Uh, you know, things like that. You know, okay. that shouldn't law enforcement um, have access to all this, this information? And I think there's a, there's a couple ways to look at that question. One is that um, uh, mass surveillance... So cryptography has existed for, you know, publicly and been in like really public circulation for 25 years now or more. Um, and this is information that you can't put back in the bottle, right? So this information is out there. People know how cryptography works. People are going to be able to use cryptography. And for a long time, people have been uh, using cryptography in really sort of difficult to use ways. Uh, there's these old tools like PGP um, that are really cumbersome and difficult for people to use. Now, people that are in, engaged in high-risk criminal activity have always used them. Because if you're engaged in high-risk criminal activity, it, you know, having to do a few extra clicks every time you send an email isn't that big of a deal. It's okay. Right. But for you and me, like, adding that kind of friction to our normal workflow isn't really worth it. So mass surveillance really only affects you and me, right? You know, that already today, um, you know, people who are engaged in high-risk criminal activity are using uh, cryptography. Um, the other way to look at it is that I think this might be an unpopular opinion, but I think that law enforcement should actually be difficult. Um, that um, it should be hard to enforce laws. 
Uh, and you know, a great example is like um, legalization of uh, marijuana in Colorado and Washington, or uh, the recent legalization of same-sex marriage. Um, you know that if if the sodomy laws had been perfectly enforced in all of the states that recently legalized same-sex marriage, uh, up until now, how would we know that we wanted to legalize same-sex marriage if we'd never been able to see anybody have the same-sex relationship? Right. Um, you know, if the, the laws against marijuana had been perfectly enforced up until now, how would we know that we wanted to legalize marijuana? You know, that there's, it should actually be difficult to enforce these things so that we can have a little bit of freedom to experience uh, the worlds that we might want. All right, well, Moxie, I had a ton more questions. I was gonna ask you about quantum encry encryption. I was gonna ask how you get your hair that way, but uh, we have actually run out of time. So, uh, you know, Moxie has a blog and he's, he's online, so follow him because he's a really, really bright guy. And thanks for all your time. I really Thank appreciate you. it.